Live here in New York City with ground zero of big data. This is SiliconAngle.com's coverage of Strata and Dupe World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Check out Wikibon for all the free research where peers go. Hit edit, we'd love to con your contribution. We're here with uh, representatives from Google. Michael Manasheri is the developer relations engineer. Michael crews around, he, he works with developers, helps them out. Uh, uh, transfers a lot of knowledge <laughs> from, from Google. Michael, welcome mm. to theCUBE. Thank you, it's good to be uh, here. Uh, let's see, at Entangled Michael. That's this it. is a yeah. uh, Twitter handle if you want to follow him, so uh, thanks for coming on. Great, it's good to be here. So this is a cool event. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just talking off camera about all the contributions Google makes just yeah. by inventing yeah. cool stuff, <laughs> writing a paper, you know, guys like Doug Cutting, you know, reads yeah. it and says, oh, I could do, I could invent Hadoop from that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite amazing to, s to see that. Um, Culturally, w w uh, where's that come from? I mean, Google just yeah, I mean, loves to give back. I mean yeah, I mean, I would say we were forced to deal with the big data. Like, our, the volume and velocity of data that comes into Google is massive, and we're always forced to innovate new technologies to deal with it. We need to ask questions quickly, we need to get answers quickly, so it's, we're just put in a position where we need to innovate quickly. So some of the stuff we do, you know, in five years, you'll see it become an open source project or come out later, because we've already solved this problem internally. And people, you know, figure out how to do it, they read our research papers, they want to, you know, figure out themselves, but we're already solving these problems now. Well, thank you for that. There's a story <laughs> on Wired Magazine about Cloudera actually, and it talks about Google's yeah. you know, work, how they, they enable the market, but mm -hmm. I've been following Google six, actually since the inception of found, when the founders founded it and mm -hmm. watching the progress. And one thing about open source that I've noticed is, is that Larry and Sergey mm -hmm. are little geeks who love to build their own stuff. Yeah. I mean, they love to tinker. They're always talking about things that are just in, sure, you know. You know, Google came out of a Stanford research project originally. These guys were like taking computers, gluing them together. Yeah. They had a Lego storage system with their hard drives. And they, they build they all hackers. their, they build their own stuff. They hack, mm -hmm. they build their own stuff, mm -hmm. but they're now getting good at it. Chrome browser is a great example. Mm -hmm. You've seen some of the work done on Android. Obviously, it's success. So, um, but what's different is that you guys are already in the big data. We meant, we interviewed right. Squirrel, this hot startup that we like. Uh, we think one of the, the one of the uh, gems that mm -hmm. are going to come out of the woodwork pretty soon. They came from NASA, NSA. Yeah, not NASA, NSA. Well, they had to build their own big data because they needed big data. Right. So they had, they had a specific need that they had to, to build and, on. And Google too. So we got mm -hmm. Big Table and yeah. everything else. So talk about Big Table and Google's vision mm -hmm. of big data and and so one and thing what's about going on Google internally is I never hear people talking about themselves as data scientists. Like we're all just consumers of you know lots of data, right? Th think of our, our servers. We have not lots and lots of servers, and we need to know the status of those servers. So nobody goes around saying I'm a data Google data scientist. You know, oftentimes they just are consumers of the services we have internally. Which is one of them is Dremel, which the product I work on is is BigQuery. It's based on that. That MapReduce yeah. came from that as well. So we just, we'd like to have these things as services so we don't have to think about them. They're just yeah. built for us. And I think that's going to be the future of the big data scene. Let's you know, talk about Dremel, because Dremel's getting a lot of press. Explain yeah. Dremel yeah. To, the, to the geeks out there and the folks yeah. out there. So and Dremel is an ad hoc query system for massive amounts of data. Um, the data comes out, the query results come back in seconds. But what's cool about it is it uses a SQL style language, so it's easy to write these queries. You know, sometimes you have to write a MapReduce to do these things as well. And using a SQL style language is expressive, it's easy to do, anybody can use it who knows SQL. Um, the another cool thing, it's not MapReduce, it's, uh, it's mostly in memory, we only read from disk once, so the query results come back really fast. We have a research paper about this as well. But what's great for me is I'm a, I'm a developer, I like to use this stuff externally, so we've made this external, you can actually use it via an API. We have people building apps on it, we have people integrating with their own apps. Is that a public service, a public yeah, API? Is there terms of service to that? Yeah, exactly there is. Um, you can go to developers.google.com slash bigquery to check it out. Um, it's a product you can use right now and people what's are building stuff. What's the use stuff. case for that one? Oh, all kinds of things, you can look log analysis, People are using it for social media, uh, social games, pulling in uh, information about the games, uh, pulling in terabytes of data and asking questions about them quickly. People building dashboards, that's another uh, common use case. All kinds of stuff. Ads, ad metrics is a great one as well. Anytime you have tons of data and you need to you know, query it quickly, uh, this, is, this is the right tool for you. Well, awesome. you have the data. I mean, yeah. Google's <laughs> got the data, right? So, so it, what's the conversation like internally? I mean, wouldn't you got to be looking at that saying, all right, what else can we do with yeah. this data? Well, How can we, you know, well, I mean, add more value with this data? It's more like what, like we have to rethink the way we do things. So uh, here's an example. If you have a relational database and you need to do a table scan, a full table scan of that data, that'll give people heart attacks. Like we often joke about a DBA who has to do a full table scan on a relational database, they're going to have a hard time. But at Google we go, well, why don't we just do a table scan and then figure it out from there. <laughs> like we kind of invert our thinking about it because we're forced to do that. And so that's what, that's why Dremel came out of that yeah, process. Yeah, I mean, like you, you, you don't <laughs> actually go around saying we're data science. They actually have a requirement requirement in the <laughs> special <laughs> algorithm of hiring. Yeah. If you can't add the proper way it's and do the um, you know, differential equation, you're <laughs> out. Yeah. You know. Oh, by the way, 
<laughs> you didn't go to the, uh, the, the right school, so you're bounced out. Nope, I can't comment on that. But we are uh, we are coming to problem solvers. You know, like yeah, we're yeah. forced with these big problems, and we just have to deal with them. So that's what happens. <laughs> I had a friend who used to work at Google. I won't say his name to protect the innocent. He used to get in there. He's like, I have no. He went to a school you wouldn't even want to know. And yeah. he said, I don't know how I got in. I must have <laughs> slipped through the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> we always have that fear that somehow we slip through the process. It's, it's diversity, you yeah. know. <laughs> Someone needs, you know. I, I got to yeah. say, that's one of the best things about working there is there's smart people everywhere. They're almost <laughs> too smart. It's, it's great. All right, so so you're a smart person. T give us well, the, your macro view of... Uh, mm -hmm. I can tell already you're at a very high clock speed uh, <laughs> mentally. But it's so all the coffee. It's, a, it's so the coffee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Multi-core going on there. So <laughs> give us the view of the conference from your perspective. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you're inside the roast, but there's a lot of people out there, I, I mean, getting kicked out at the door. There's not enough room. It's packed house. It's packed. I mean, I was talking to Dave about this earlier, and I think what the thing about this conference this year is we're gluing together all the parts of big data, right? So we have all these tools that are specialized in a particular use case. You know, we've got like BigQuery is great for really fast queries over, over data. Um, collecting data, that's like HBase, that's really good for that. And we're, we're uh, putting together all the systems that are filling in the gaps, right? So now we have services coming out that are doing, uh, you were talking about relational and non-relational together. We have services that are um, built, people building apps in the cloud and you just put the whole big data app in the cloud. You don't have to do anything more. BigQuery is like that too. It's a service you just use, you just sign up, it's an API, it's easy to use. So this is the year of filling in the gaps for the data pipeline, the big data pipeline. Mass amounts of data are now easier to do, and people are finding solutions that are just easy to spin so up. You talk about the data in the cloud, the Google Compute Engine, yeah. and the like. Um, talk about that a little bit. How's that going? Yeah, I mean, the hardest part has to be getting the data they into won't the cloud. They won't let us in. They won't let us in, by the way. They promised <laughs> that Google, Google I.O. that we'd get in. I look at my, well, my I'll request. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll ask the Compute Engine guys about it. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not actually on the Compute Engine team, but I mean, wh one, thing, one thing about that is you're right about getting data into the cloud. That's a bottleneck for a lot of people. So we're, you know, everyone's looking into this problem. It, the, the fact is the internet is, is slow. You have a buddy, Ilya, who gave the GitHub talk here at Strata, and he's on the Make the Web Faster team at Google. There's actually a team about that. And you know, he's always talking about how the bottleneck is like, the, the, the internet's actually kind of slow, you know? And we have to, that, that's one me one blocker. Well, you guys solved some hard, I mean, you solved the speed of light mm. problem with Spanner. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> Spanner is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got, I if you guys don't know what this is, we have, a, we have a research paper about Spanner. It's sort of our, our large scale <laughs> database system. You should definitely check it out. Google it. It's. I mean, Google obviously mind. wants to make the web. I got to give Google a lot of credit. They're very pro web, and they want to make it go faster. But there's also an economic incentive. The faster the page loads, the faster the clicks, mm -hmm. and statistically, it, it adds up. Right. When you have a look at the market <laughs> share, I mean, you know, well, I mean, a, a small percent improvement. I, I mean, you know, Google is all about making things better for everyone. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it, yeah. I mean, that's maybe true, but also we do want the web to go faster. We're web users too, and we want to make that all happen. All right. So give the update on code.google.com. Mm -hmm. Went to a, um, a briefing a couple years ago. You guys obviously pro open source, there's no, there's no hiding behind that, mm -hmm. you guys are great. What's the update, what's new, people might not know about code.google.com I mean that's going on right code now? Code.google.com is great, I use it all the time, that's a great way to share data, you know, we have all sorts of ways to interact with it, and we have a lot of like Git, Git users here, um, and like Mercurial, and it supports all those as well. So uh, we actually put all of our code, our open source code for BigQuery up on that uh, site as well, so you should definitely check it out. I mean, I think it's just a great way to go. Um, what about developer support? What kind of support are you guys offering? All developers? kinds of stuff. I mean, for example, for BigQuery, we like to interact on Stack Overflow. We know that's where the developers <coughs> are. So our official s developer support is on Stack Overflow. So if you go to the Google-BigQuery tag, that's where you'll find us. Your engineers hang out there all, all day long, and we love to answer your questions. It's, a great, it's just a great way to, to meet with developers. We love it. Can you talk more about your developer program? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So we have a, a, a large amount of people who are on the developer relations team at Google. And our job is to just you know, evangelize both outside of Google and internally as well. Right, so we want to make sure that developers are, are being heard, and we want to bring that feedback back into Google to make the products better. That's, that's definitely what we try to do. We have uh, tech writers as well, writing great documentation. Um, my job is you know, go to conferences, talk to developers, write sample code, see what the best practices are around our APIs. So what are you hearing from the community? What, what are they, what well, are they I mean telling you? The What's big the data pattern? community, well, I'm, I'm a BigQuery guy, so I'm, I, I interact yep. with big data people all the time. They love BigQuery. BigQuery is like what I think of the, as the future of big data. It's, it's easy to use, it's super powerful, it's easy to integrate, it uses conventions that web developers are used to. And so I, I just think it's the kind of model that's going to be found more in the future, these kind of RESTful APIs. For so I got, I got to ask this because this is what's hot right now, mm. Impala. Yep. Obviously, real-time querying, they, they're, they're kind of dancing around. Some people are saying, you know, it's not there, baked out yet. Obviously, Jeff Hammerbach, a great vision, it's built off MapReduce. You guys are yeah. living this dr that dream right now with big, with big query yeah, I mean and big table. So I what's I your take on the uh, Apollo? I like it. I mean, I, so here's, the, here's what I feel. It, it's, I guess it's an open source project. I need to learn more about it, but um, I think it's great. I want to see more, more projects. I, if there's more competition for BigQuery, that's great. If there's more people looking into this need of real-time analytics or, or quick analytics on large data sets, that's great. 
Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing what they're doing, and I want to see more open source projects around that. We love that, and we want you know what I was just talking to Dave about this. Features that are found in other applications get kind of moved around. Like you see people with non-relational databases getting relational features and vice versa, mm -hmm. and I think that can work as well for uh, everything across the. Well, we've data seen that we've seen the database evolution where it's you know in general purpose and it shifts yeah. to specialized. Yeah. You know, object store, old OLAP mm -hmm. now. You know. Yeah, you big see data, yeah, it's and like it goes back to general purpose right. again. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of seeing this this year. I, I think we're just shaking out a new industry, and we're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, what's too expensive, what's, you know, and we're figuring out this year. And I think in the in the upcoming years, you're going to see, like, um, some some models actually predominate when they, they get it all figured out. It reminds me a little bit of, like, ether, what Ethernet used to be. You know, there used to be competing, <laughs> competing protocols, and we're kind right. of in that space where we're trying to figure out what works best, what's cheap enough, a lot what of people want to do. A lot of wealth created during that generation. you got 3Com, yeah, Cisco, I mean, and the internetworking hole, mm -hmm. TCP IP enabled an entire shift. Yeah, of big data is full of buzzwords, but I think there's some validity in what's going on. I mean, it's like people are trying to figure out what's going on, but I think we do have needs, and Google's shown that there's needs to process volumes of data. And let me, let me ask you that question, because the Ethernet thing was we lived through that era together, and Dave and I as mm. well, and so, so let's talk about that. The enabler of TCP IP enabled a whole bunch of stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. What's the big enabler? What's the disruptive enabler in this market today? If you can put your to finger me, on well, it. Well, so just speaking for myself, I think it's making this technology invisible is really what it's all about. Like not having to think about what you're doing with big data, like not having to build your own infrastructure, not having to but worry is there about a tech, stuff. But is there a technology, can you put your hands in, you know, that protocol or this element is gonna, that's the lever that's enabling the disruption. I think it's really about usability. I think that's what's going to make this stuff really, really useful. I mean, I, I was just talking to some of my colleagues today about we're looking, still looking for success cases. Like Google is a success case in the big data world, but I want to see other people build success Mainstream. cases. Yeah, exactly. I want to have more stories. And so I think the jury's still out about what are the success cases in this space. Um, and I want to see more of that. But I think the technology's already there. It's just making it more usable, more accessible. Yeah, awesome. And we believe it too. We, we love, we have a, our own big data project, SiliconANGLE Wikibon. Mm -hmm. We, our website at SiliconANGLE for the Google folks that are watching or anyone else is mm -hmm. that we don't have any ads on our site. Mm -hmm. um, Wikibon's free content, we're free content, yep. no banner ads. All open source. All open source. Right. source content. And we <laughs> monitor the crowd mm -hmm. using big data and it's pretty data analytics yeah. for, story, for to figure out the stories. And you can and do that now. It, we it's, we it's are doing you're it. You're able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Could you even do that five years ago? No. Maybe not as easily. It, it was hard with structured with, with, with uh, MySQL database. Mm -hmm. You might have been able with. to do it five <laughs> years ago. <but laughs> Google yeah. would have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The NSA and Google could do it, but not <laughs> Silicon Angle Wookiee Bond, that's for sure. We're going to change that. No, I mean, that's mean, what we're trying to do. Schema problem was a really big deal mm. in the general purpose in the developer market because you had to manage schemas and it was hard. Uh, uh, large scale data, it's Yeah, a we want to make that in easy and invisible and accessible. I mean, it just should be easy for everyone. What do you think about MongoDB? Oh yeah, I use MongoDB, yeah. I actually, I think MongoDB is very, for example, it's complementary with other technologies. It's it's a great for you know having a database, non-relational, it's a document store. I want to take that data and analyze it, stick it into a BigQuery. So you believe that the, the vision of Mer merging data sets is really where it's where we're getting to. I mean, that's where value is, right? That's, like, that's a developer environment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people, so what's happening is startups are gluing this stuff together, right? Like, like duct taping all these technologies together, and we're trying to figure out what works best. And there's going to be companies coming out that understand the best practices and just building that one service for everyone. And, and there's some guys here doing that. We believe in the same thing. We think you can go into a data market mm -hmm. and figure out what's going on, but you got to be able to integrate into and use other data sets in real time. Mm -hmm. To me, I yeah. think that patchwork will create new new solutions. Definitely. There's a lot and of activity around that. And uh, great. Okay, well, final question for you. Big prediction for the next couple of years. <laughs> um, yeah, the usability I, just I talk shoot about the, arrow all the time. Forward. I think I so we were talking about cloud and how I, I think the internet is slow, but I think there's a lot of value in getting data into the cloud because there's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of great advantages to doing that. For example, interacting with data with the RESTful API. So I think there's going to be a lot more services like BigQuery in the cloud. There's going to be transformation services, there's going to be more storage services, and there's going to be more analytics services. I think that's where it's all going. So that's my prediction. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. that's a wrap for this segment. It looks like day one's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, John Furrier, Dave Vellante, we'll be right back uh, with a wrap up after this short break on theCUBE on SiliconANGLE.TV. Great.